What's up, Pumpers? Jerome here with another classic WoW TBC video, and you just dinged level 70. I'm here to help you with the ultimate guide for what to do next so you can be relevant in raids and high-end arenas. I want to give you all the information you need to get out there as quickly as possible. Before we get started, please click that like button, hit the subscription button, and don't forget to click that notification bell or I won't be able to keep making content like this. All right, so this entire guide is essentially sort of a quick guide for when you hit level 70, how to get to, to that sort of raid viability and arena viability as quick as possible. A lot of this information comes from my own personal experience and my good friend Palm Cruz, who just got level 70 and is already in the new raids and raid viable. And my friend Cindy Hunt as well, who has gotten raid viable as well very quickly on her paladin. I wanna get you raid viable and arena relevant as quickly as possible. So the first thing you've gotta do when you hit 70, and hopefully you've been thinking about this before you hit 70, is you've got to make some decisions. Think about it sort of like you're going off to college, you got to pick a major. It's time to finally decide what do you want to do with your character. So let's say you're playing a prot paladin, and I personally have a prot paladin I'm working on right now. I'm level 70, and I'm following the guy that I'm, I'm showing you right now. Basically, I have to make a decision. What kind of gear do I want to acquire when I do my battlegrounds and my raids? Because I can't get everything. And personally, I want to play a Holy Shockadin in arenas so every choice I make needs to be geared around that because a lot of the gear is similar between a Holy Shockadin and a Prot Paladin, at least the way I'm specking and gearing. It actually makes a lot of sense for me to stay Prot Paladin, but it could also make sense to go Holy Paladin and acquire a lot of healing power and spell power gear that way. What you do now will determine what you end up playing in the end game. The thing to keep in mind with that though is you could do a bunch of dungeons and just sort of need on everything that is relevant for your character. And most people will not be too upset with that. And now you have a sort of a fallback plan if you change your mind. But ultimately, this is the moment to make your tough decision. Now that you've made your hard choices on what you want to actually do in the end game with your character, and for example, for me, I want to play a Holy Shockadin, so all of my gearing and rating priorities will go around being a Holy Shockadin. It's time to pick our professions. And likely by now, you've already selected some professions but if you aren't already enchanting, this would be the absolute best time to get enchanting because you're going to be running a lot of dungeons and all those dungeons are pure profit for you. You can make thousands of gold throughout your gearing process if you have enchanting and you're snagging up those greens and blues and even epics. Your second profession will be most likely engineering. And if you are engineering, there is profit to be made from sappers, for example, and, and certain crafting. But ultimately, engineering is also great because it head starts your gear. You can get the goggles, and these are around the best level for a lot of classes. For tanks, you can run things like the Goblin Rocket Launcher for additional stamina. Basically, if you want to get some really easy gear slotted in that is around BIS, it's not quite BIS. Engineering is fantastic, plus sappers and super sappers are so great for raids. And that being said, it's also worth noting, I would definitely recommend skipping tailoring and leatherworking. These options were great when the game came out, but there's a lot of equal or viable pieces or even better pieces that you can get. Instead of crafting items, there are some situations where tailoring can be really great. For example, the bind on pickup shoulders in Hydral. These are really, really, really good pieces for haste. There is one reason to have leatherworking, and that reason is drums, and drums are going to be better in the Zal Amon patch. But for now, I would go with enchanting and engineering. These are just going to be safe, easy options. Enchanting going to make you so much gold and engineering gives you those extra free pieces. All right, so we've decided what we're gonna be playing in the end game and we picked our professions. It's time to make some tangible progress. And the first thing I would recommend doing is going into battlegrounds. And yes, you're probably thinking, oh my God, I'm going to get destroyed. And you will get destroyed. If you go into battlegrounds, you will be playing against people with Black Temple level gear, and season three level gear. It's very important to note that the season one gladiator gear that is really, really easy to obtain right now after the changes is essentially phase one bis. It is equivalent to the Kara gear, the Gruul's gear, the Mag gear in a lot of ways. There are obviously exceptions, but in general, the weapons are absolutely busted, especially for a healer. If you go out and you get the Gladiator Mace, it is essentially as good as Light's Justice. So if you want to get a healer out really fast, a couple hours in Battlegrounds, I would say about 10 to 15 hours. On a double weekend, you could easily be getting a weapon. You can get an offhand. You could even start working on armor pieces as well. If you want to go full season one, Gladiator Biss, it's a really, really great place to start. 
obviously you're not going to be quite raid ready with just those pieces but it's a really fantastic foundation it's also really important to note that the vindicators pieces from phase three season three are insane a lot of these pieces are equivalent to second or third bits for classes like prod paladin these are really really ridiculous pieces and it will take you a long time to get things like the battle master trinkets are insane and absolutely worth getting on a lot of classes there are really 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 great pieces here if you're willing to grind the pvp my recommendation is to incorporate pvp into your daily routine when you can i would love if you went out and did battlegrounds yes you will get destroyed a lot but especially Alterac valley is one of my personal favorites when you have a fresh character it really doesn't matter what your gear is people won't care they won't notice and you can get a lot of honor and the turn-ins are amazing right now even if you lose every single game you play which is not going to happen you still get one mark every single time these marks turn in for massive massive honor really definitely worth doing i would start with pvp and then work from there all right so we've added battlegrounds to our itinerary that's going to be the first thing we're going to start with is getting a big main weapon or whatever piece makes the most sense for your class we're going to get into some better season gear we're going for arena gear now and this is going to take you a long time to get on a fresh character if you do fives and you basically lose every game you can still eventually get to around 1000 rating or even a little bit higher than that and that's going to give you around 400 points a week which means in eight weeks, you'll have a Biss main hand weapon, which sounds like a really long time, and it is, but that's not the only thing you can get. You can get things like gloves or a helmet, for example, for significantly cheaper price. And of course, if you can get anywhere past 1000 arena rating, you're gonna be getting way more points every single week. This is not something where I'm saying, hey, get to 1750 rating and acquire a piece every single week. I'm very realistic here. You're probably going to lose most of your arena games on a fresh character, but your idea is to get five people that are all on the same page about this. And ideally, over time, you'll improve your gear. You'll get a little bit higher rating. And when you do really have great gear, you can go and get a lot more arena points per week. The important thing is to start working towards an item and being very realistic about how long it's going to take and not being frustrated. Go in with the right mindset. Yes, the games are going to be difficult, but you don't really have any gear that's exactly how the system is designed don't get frustrated just enjoy the fact that you're acquiring free gear all right so we're slowly working towards a true second or third best piece from arenas and we're working on our season one gear at the exact same time as doing all of that i'd love if you started with some rep grinds and these are so necessary to get into raids and of course that end game experience what you're going to need to do is pull up a list for your class and your spec of the previous pieces that you're going to need to farm from dungeons and heroics as well and all the rep rewards you can get this will be sort of how you approach which dungeons you do at which time one thing that's worth noting is that no matter what you're most likely going to need badges of justice these are for a lot of near bis or pre bis pieces that are fantastic you're always going to want to do that daily heroic every single day it is absolutely worth doing for the extra badges and a little bit of free gold as well don't forget of course that there's a lot of turn-ins you can do to speed up some reps so for example shatar rep can be sped up by doing your outdoor or scryer quest turn-ins this will give you 50 percent of the rep you would get for outdoor or scryer to your shatar up to honored as well which is fantastic there are a lot of examples of this dldr if you have rep a lot of the grinds can be done a lot faster things like aldor scryer can be outright bought on the auction house so if this isn't your first character you can do things a lot more efficiently one thing worth noting is that heroics are not easy by any means with a fresh character even with a maxed out character heroics can be a real struggle so make sure you go and work towards that battlegrounds piece as quickly as possible so that you have a huge power spike when you do your heroics all right so while we're pvp and we're doing our arenas and we're doing our rep grinds it's also really important that we start our attunement quest the hydro quest and the black temple quest the black temple quest can be started even pre-70 you're gonna want to get these set up as soon as humanly possible because the black temple attunement is going to require you to go into these raids and that's going to set you back so you essentially have to have a waiting period of a lockout so that's that's something you want to get done as soon as humanly possible and of course since you have to get a tune anyways it does make sense to sort of add this in at this point and mix things up after a long battleground session for example you can work on your attunements gives you a little variety and something to keep you from burning out all right so you've been playing quite a bit of wow at this point but it's time to get into some raids and this step could be done pretty quickly and pretty early on depending on what your role is if you're a healer you can definitely get into a karazhan immediately almost and this would be a really really great play 
to get a ton of gear quickly. I would recommend getting into Karazhan your first week after hitting 70. No matter what your role is, even on a tank, you can do it the first week if you play enough this will immediately get the gear flowing you'll get so many pieces because practically nobody that's already maxed out and has been doing raids needs very much from karazan maybe something like a bow for a hunter but ultimately most of the gear will go to you so you'll basically be getting a supercharged run i would definitely recommend doing karazan every single week once you hit 70 until you have every piece you need from kara for gruels and magtherodon however unlike karazan i would definitely recommend looking at a best in slot list and seeing what pieces you really need. If you don't need anything from Gruels or you don't need anything from Magtherodon, this is where you can actually add in a GDKP, which is essentially people bidding on items with gold, and you can make a bunch of gold to pay for everything you need to do because gold is paramount with a fresh character. If you do need things from both raids, just do the raids normally. Your ultimate goal from Karazhan and Gruels and Magtherodon is to get geared enough to be allowed into SSC and TK, which is Tempest Keep, and Serpent Shrine Cavern. You want to get into those raids as soon as possible, of course, because of your Black Temple Attunement, which needs to be done ASAP, and because you're going to be getting near Biz pieces, Biz from last phase, that are going to be your ticket into those final raids, like Black Temple and Hygel. There's also been a recent change where you actually can exchange pieces from SSC and TK for Season 2 Arena Biz pieces, which means that you can actually get geared up for arenas even faster. If you have a fresh level 70, there is no excuse. You need to be an SSC and TK as soon as humanly possible and keep in mind the requirements to get into these dungeons only goes down people are more lenient they're not going to reject you if your gear isn't perfect you just got to get in there as soon as possible because there's so much great loot you need to get all right so you've been doing your Karazhan your Gruels your Magtheridon you've been PvPing up a storm you've been dungeoning up a storm it's time to make some contacts all right so we're going to be looking on our servers discord Anywhere we can possibly find, uh, Trade Chat is a great example as well. We need to find you a guild. With all the WoW game playing you've been doing lately, it's pretty likely that somebody you've run into needs you for their guild. So just keep a very open mind. Always be willing to add people, be friendly with them in dungeons and raids, and they'll likely even want you in their guild. If not, you can just go into the Trade Chat and find a guild that's recruiting. Keep in mind that just because you join a guild that's doing SSC and TK does not mean the loot faucet will be turning on. Pretty much everything in SSC and TK, especially the tier pieces with the arena changes, everything is in super high demand. So even now, you're probably not going to be getting that many pieces immediately, but it's still something you have to do to get the math into your favor and slowly start getting those upgrades you desperately need. So if you join a guild for SSC and TK, this is the time to get attuned. This is the time to try to sneak your way into a raid spot as soon as you can. It's probably going to take you at least a month, but definitely 100% worth it. While you're working at a raid spot, this is the absolute best time to be doing Mount Hygel Trash Farming. And Mount Hygel Trash Farming is absolutely ridiculously good. It is so, so profitable. You can get Exalted with the, the Shifting Sands rep, which is fantastic. You get a true Biss ring for your character. You can also get all sorts of Biss items. There's cloaks, there's boots. For whatever class you're running, there's most likely a Biss item you need in there. And it's worth it for gold as well, which will help fund your character even better. I highly recommend you do at least 20 to 30 hours of Mount Hygel trash farming on a new character. When you get attuned, it is 100,000% worth it and something you should do. One thing you might also have an option to do is Black Temple trash farming. And although people might think this is a little boring, I actually think it's really good for the game. You can generate a ton of epic gems this way. And even the amazing rings, like the haste rings, are fantastic. This is yet another way to catch up. If you did, like, let's say 30 hours of trash farming, I'm definitely sure you'd get something. And that would al allow you to get a sort of a leg up on everybody else that isn't doing the trash farming. So this means that playing more and actually being dedicated to the game will reward you, which I think is fantastic. Frankly, I think if you're not doing trash farming on a new character like this, you're missing out on a mechanic that they intended for you to do 15 years ago. These are really, really, really good catch-up mechanics and ways to deal with more difficult content. And you, with your sheer number of hours played, can take massive advantage. All right, so at this point in the guide, hopefully your Black Temple and Hygel are tuned, and maybe even raiding consistently in a great guild doing Black Temple and Hygel every single week. Now you've got to ask yourself the ultimate question. You've done the battlegrounds, you've done the rep farming, you've done the arenas, you've done the attunements, and you've done the raids. Are you going to start a new alt character and do it all over again in time for Wrath of the Lich King? I know the answer for me is an absolute yes, and I can't wait to get started.
Now that you've watched this post-70 starting guide, I hope you're a little bit more inspired to get back into the Burning Crusade and even get a little bit of preparation going for Wrath of the Lich King. I want to know in the comments below, what are you doing to prepare for Wrath of the Lich King? I know it's going to be an absolute blast, and I want to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to have a great day.